रेनु रे On this occasion I will convey the history of Nebuchadnezzar the 1st. Nebuchadnezzar the 1st or Nebuchadrezzar the 1st reigned 1121 to 1100 BC was the 4th king of the 2nd dynasty of Isin and 4th dynasty of Babylon. He ruled for 22 years according to the Babylonian king list C and was the most prominent monarch of this dynasty. He is best known for his victory over Elam and the recovery of the cultic idol of Marduk. He is unrelated to his later namesake, Nabuchadurayur II, who has come to be known by the Hebrew form of his name, Nebuchadnezzar. Consequently, it is anachronistic but not inappropriate to apply this designation retroactively to the earlier king, as he does not make an appearance in the Bible. He is misidentified in the chronicle concerning the reign of Samasumayukin as the brother of Sariktisukamuna probably in place of Ninurtikuturayur I. He succeeded his father, Ninurtanadin Sumi, and was succeeded in turn by his son in Lilnadin Apli, brother Marduk Nadine and then nephew Marduk Sapixiri, the only members of this family known to have reigned during the dynasty. The Enmejuranki legend, or the seed of kingship, is a Sumero Akkadian composition relating his endowment with perfect wisdom, Nam Kuzu, by the god Marduk and his claim to belong to a distant line of kingship from before the flood and to be an offspring of Enmejuranki, king of Sippar. The duration of Nebuchadnezzar's war with Elam and the number of campaigns he conducted are not known, though it is reasonable to believe that this was a protracted effort with diverse strategic considerations. According to a later literary tradition, an invasion of Elam was thwarted when his army was struck by plague and he narrowly escaped death in the stampede to return home. A raid, or Ayu, commemorated in a Kuduru created during his reign describes a successful campaign. In this raid he was accompanied by the Kassite chieftain Sidi Marduk who struck the decisive blow, he was able to overrun Elam in a surprise attack conducted from Dirt during the hottest of the summer months, Dumuzi, when the axes, held in the hand, burned like fire and the road surfaces were scorching like flame. There was no water in the wells and drinking supplies were unavailable. The strength of the powerful horses slackened and the legs of even the strongest man weakened. According to the Kuduru, Nebuchadnezzar routed the Elamite king Ultaludian Susanak on the banks of the river Elia in an engagement that saw the dust of the battle darkening the sky. No contemporary or later source records a sack of Susa by Nebuchadnezzar, but according to another Kuduru he was able to retrieve the statue of Marduk and that of the goddess Ayel Elia during this or another campaign. The campaign destroyed Elam as a power and provided a defining moment for the Babylonians akin to the siege of Troy for the ancient Greeks. This famous victory was celebrated in hymns, and poetry, and alluded to in the Marduk prophecy. Known as Nabuchadurayur and Marduk, a poetic document dealing with the legendary story of his recovery of the statue of Marduk, and is one of two hymns glorify his military achievements. It opens with the king in despair, lamenting over the absence of Marduk, beautiful Babylon pass through your heart, turn your face toward, your temple, Asajala, which you love. The hymn to Marduk, celebrating victory over the Elamites, is assigned to him rather than Ashurbanipal who had a similar triumph, on stylistic grounds. There is a poetic pseudo-autobiography, which does not actually mention him by name. An interlinear Sumero-Akkadian text describes the events preceding the return of the statue from Elam and its joyous installation in Babylon. A 7th-century astrological report alludes to observations made during his reign and their relationship to his devastation of Elam. The synchronistic history relates his entente cordiale with his contemporary, the Assyrian king Assyrisai Asai I, and subsequently the outcome of two military campaigns against the border fortresses of Zanchi and Edi that he conducted in violation of this agreement. The first was curtailed by the arrival of Assyrisai Asai's main force, 
causing Nabu Kaduriyur to burn his siege engines and flee, while the second resulted in a battle in which the Assyrians apparently triumphed, slaughtered his troops, and carried off his camp. It even reports the capture of the Babylonian field marshal, Karastu. He is titled as the conqueror of the Amorite lands, despoiler of the Kassites, in the city Marduk Kaduru, despite the beneficiary being a Kassite chieftain and ally, and having smitten the mighty Loyabu with weapons. His construction activities are memorialized in building inscriptions of the Ekidus Eagle Tila, Temple of Adad, in Babylon, on bricks from the Temple of Enlil in Nippur and appear in the later King Simbersipak's reference to his having built the throne of Enlil for the Ikarijigal in Nippur. A late Babylonian inventory lists his donations of gold vessels in Ur and Nabonidus, 555-539 BC, consulted his steel for the Antipriestus. The earliest of three extant economic texts is dated to his eighth year. Together with three Kaduris and a stone memorial tablet, these are the only contemporary commercial or administrative records extant. Apart from the two deeds related to the Elamite campaign, the other Kaduru bears witness to a land grant to the Nisaku of Nippur, a certain Nadkuibni. His name appears on four Lorsten bronze daggers and there is a prayer to Marduk on two more. He may be the Nabu Kaduriyur who is mentioned in the Chronicle of Market Prices which records his ninth year but the context is lost. The Uruk list of sages and scholars names Sagal Kinamabib as the Amanu, or sage, who served under him and the later king Adadapla Adina when he would author the Babylonian Theodicy, and several literary texts are thought to originate from his age, written in both Sumerian and Akkadian. Lambert has suggested that it was during his reign that Marduk was elevated to the head of the pantheon, displacing Enlil, and that the Enuma Elis was possibly composed, but some historians claim an origin during the earlier Kassite dynasty. A text concerning chemical process, imitations for precious stones, bears a colophon identifying it as a copy of an older Babylonian original but places it in his library. That's the history that I can convey this time, I hope it's useful, don't forget to share, like and subscribe.